Welcome to Walking with the Word, the Bible in 365. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and I just pray you would give us insight and understanding into your word and give peace to those who need peace today. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Today we are reading Ezekiel 46 and 47 in Acts chapter 8. Ezekiel 46, thus says the Lord God, the gate of the inner court that faces east shall be shut on the six working days. But on the Sabbath day, it shall be opened, and on the day of the new moon, it shall be opened. The prince shall enter by the vestibule of the gate from outside, and shall take his stand by the post of the gate. The priest shall offer his burnt offering and his peace offerings, and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate. Then he shall go out, but the gate shall not be shut until evening. The people of the land shall bow down at the entrance of that gate before the Lord on the Sabbaths and on the new moons. The burnt offering that the prince offers to the Lord on the Sabbath day shall be six lambs without blemish and a ram without blemish. And the grain offering with the ram shall be an ephah, and the grain offering with the lambs shall be as much as he is able, together with a hen of oil to each ephah. On the day of the new moon, he shall offer a bull from the herd without blemish and six lambs and a ram, which shall be without blemish as a grain offering. He shall provide an ephah with the bull and an ephah with the ram and with the lambs as much as he is able, together with a hen of oil to each ephah. When the prince enters, he shall enter by the vestibule of the gate and he shall go out by the same way. When the people of the land come before the Lord at the appointed feast, he who enters by the north gate to worship shall go out by the south gate, and he who enters by the south gate shall go out by the north gate. No one shall return by way of the gate by which he entered, but each shall go out straight ahead. When they enter, the prince shall enter with them, and when they go out, he shall go out. At the feast and at the appointed festivals, the grain offering with a young bull shall be an ephah, and with a ram an ephah, and with the lambs as much as one is able to give, together with a hen of oil and an ephah. When the prince provides a free will offering, either a burnt offering or peace offerings, as a free will offering to the Lord. The gate facing east shall be open for him, and he shall offer his burnt offering or his peace offerings, as he does on the Sabbath day. Then he shall go out, and after he has gone out, the gate shall be shut. You shall provide a lamb, a year old, without blemish, for a burnt offering to the Lord daily. Morning by morning you shall provide it, and you shall provide a grain offering with it. Morning by morning, one-sixth of an ephah and one-third of a hen of oil, to moisten the flour, as a grain offering to the Lord. This is a perpetual state. Thus the lamb and the meal offering and the oil shall be provided morning by morning for a regular burnt offering. Thus says the Lord God, if the prince makes a gift to any of his sons as an inheritance, it shall belong to his sons. It is their property by inheritance. But if he makes a gift out of his inheritance to one of his servants, it shall be his to the year of liberty. Then it shall revert to the prince. Surely it is his inheritance. It shall belong to his sons. The prince shall not take any of the inheritance of the people, thrusting them out of their property. He shall give his sons their inheritance out of his own property so that none of my people shall be scattered from his property. Then he brought me through the entrance, which was at the side of the gate, to the north row of the holy chambers for the priest. And behold, a place was there at the extreme western end of them. And he said to me, This is the place where the priest shall boil the guilt offering and the sin offering, and where they shall bake the grain offering, in order not to bring them out into the outer court, and so transmit holiness to the people. Then he brought me out to the outer court and led me around the four corners of the court. And behold, in each corner of the court, there was another court. In the four courts of the court were small courts, 40 cubits long and 30 broad. The four were of the same size. On the inside, around each of the four courts was a row of masonry with hearths made at the bottom of the rows all around. Then he said to me, these are the kitchens where those who minister at the temple shall boil the sacrifices of the people. 
Ezekiel 47. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was flowing down from below the south end of the threshold of the temple south of the altar. Then he brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around the outside to the outer gate that faces east toward the east, and behold, the water was trickling out on the south side. Going on eastward with a measuring line in his hand, the man measured a thousand cubits, and then he led me through the water, and it was ankle deep. Again he measured a thousand, and led me through the water, and it was knee deep. Again he measured a thousand, and led me through the water, and it was waist deep. Again he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass through, for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be passed through. And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. As I went back, I saw on the bank of the river very many trees on one side and on the other. And he said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, and it enters the sea. When the water flows into the sea, the water will become fresh, and wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live, and there will be many fish. For this water goes there, that the waters of the sea may become fresh, so everything will live where the river goes. Fishermen will stand beside the sea. From Engedi to Englim, it will be a place for the spreading of the nets. Its fish will be very many kinds, like the fish of the great sea, but its swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They are left for salt. On the banks on both sides of the river, there will grow all kinds of trees for food. Their leaves will not wither, nor their fruit fail, but they will bear fresh fruit every month because the water for them flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for healing. Thus says the Lord God, this is the boundary by which you shall divide the land for inheritance among the twelve tribes of Israel. Joseph shall have two portions, and you shall divide equally what I swore to give to your fathers. This land shall fall to you as your inheritance. This shall be the boundary of the land, on the north side from the great sea by the way of Hethlon to Lebo Hamath, and on to Zadad, Berathah, Sibrium, which lies on the border between Damascus and Hamath as far as Hazer Hadakon, which is on the border of Horon. So the boundary shall run from the sea to Hazer and Enan, which is on the border of Damascus, with the border of Hamath to the north. This shall be the north side. On the east side, the boundary shall run between Horon and Damascus, along the Jordan between Gilead and the land of Israel, to the eastern sea as far as Tamar. This shall be on the east side. On the south side, it shall run from Tamar as far as the waters from Meribeth Kadesh. From there, along the brook of Egypt to the great sea, this shall be the south side. On the west side, the great sea shall be the boundary to a point opposite Lebo Hamath. This shall be the west side. So you shall divide this land among you according to the tribes of Israel. You shall allot it as an inheritance for yourselves and for the sojourners who reside among you and have had children among you. They shall be to you as a native-born child of Israel. With you they shall be allotted an inheritance among the tribes of Israel. In whatever tribe the sojourner resides, there you shall assign him his inheritance, declares the Lord. Acts chapter 8 And Saul approved of his execution. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ. And the crowds with one accord paid attention to what was being said by Philip, when they heard him and saw the signs that he did. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who had them, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was much joy in that city. But there was a man named Simon, who had previously practiced magic in the city and amazed the people of Samaria. 
saying that he himself was somebody great. They all paid attention to him, from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the power of God that is called great. And they paid attention to him because for a long time he had amazed them with his magic. But when they believed Philip, as he preached good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Even Simon himself believed, and after being baptized, he continued with Philip, and seeing signs and great miracles performed, he was amazed. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me this power also, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. And Simon answered, Pray for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may come upon me. Now when they had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem preaching the gospel to many villages of the Samaritans. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join his chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this, Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb, before its shear is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop. And they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus. And as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea.